Namaste and welcome to my channel. My name is Neeraj and today we'll be talking about 100 plus reasons why you should not be coming into Canada from India. Now this is basically my experience uh, living in Canada for about and a half or five years now and then this is mostly around a bit of candid conversation, some amount of frustration, good, bad and ugly points but it's mostly going to cover the, uh, the pessimistic side of thing if you will which is why you should not be also anybody should not be coming in from India to Canada and that's the context of, context of this video and I've listed on 100 plus reasons of doing so. I made a deck or let's say a PowerPoint presentation where you can really uh, see why, why I'm saying so and I have drafted some data around that whatever could make sense to bring in that context why those 100 plus uh, reasons are important for anybody to know. Now this is equally applicable to other people as well whoever is trying to come to Canada in general and somebody who is a new immigrant as well. Uh, it's just that my experience is mostly around the Indian context of coming in from India four and a half, five years ago to Canada, I'm living in Ontario currently as I speak. So, uh, but a lot of reasons of uh, around all the 102 reasons, let's say 100 plus reasons that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, there will be definitely something for you worthwhile watching and knowing, which will be equally applicable in your context or country where you, wherever you are coming from. So I hope you like this video. Please stay tuned. It's going to be a little longer today. So you can. Uh, so that's the first deck. I've got 102 reasons to be precise, and let's let's say 100 plus reasons. So why um, not to come to Canada from India? Uh, follow me on social at t a g n e e r a j tag Neeraj. And if you like my video, please do subscribe. I always appreciate that. So let's get started. Now before we get started, this is slide zero or the next zero. Um, I just wanted to quote the leader of the opposition here. Uh, this can contain a little bit of politics, candid conversation, uh, like I said, um, plus minus screenshots that you'll be going through, but I'll try to be as quick as I can, but it's mostly focused around data points, uh, my logic around why it doesn't make sense. So his name is Pierre Poilivre, as you see, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correct. So <clears throat> it feels like Everything is broken in the country, in this country right now. Uh, this is his quote, by the way. 40 year high inflation, 35 year olds living in their parents' uh, basements and nearly 100% increase in fuel prices. So I've given a small, uh, like uh, on the right hand top, if you see uh, immigration level plans. So the government plans to have from, let's say, um, 2023 is 465,000 people and then 2024 they want to call in 485,000 people uh, and the red line over there that you see and 2025 is of course 500,000 people. This is one plus some three seven or something like that, some million number which obviously there are surveys going on in Canada which people are raising a concern for. The situation where that is a quote of the leader of opposition and it gets kind of the little irony is that we are calling in so many people here and uh, the first tweet I'm sharing that with you is from Justin Trudeau, of course, uh, welcome to Canada. Uh, that's the one which I was actually <clears throat> interested to come long back. That's I guess 2015 or so. <clears throat> that's where we also dreamt of coming into Canada, which is good. So I'm, I'm grateful to the almighty God to do that for us. But, and the right hand side is again, right hand bottom is Jagmeet Singh. He says, uh, it's kind of a funny thing because <clears throat> he's again the leader of Again, one more opposition party here called NDP, and he's basically sort of behaving like the right hand for Justin Trudeau government or the liberal government here. So he supports all, uh, since that the government is a minority government, Jagmeet Singh's party has to support the current party uh, in terms of providing them with all the, you know, yes and nays, whatever they have to decide in terms of supporting or not supporting this liberal party, and then that's how it is the decisions or policy is made in Canada right now. So somebody basically um, kind of agitated him in public, somebody kind of teased him a little bit. So he says, martial arts were a big part of my life. He taught me about discipline and honor and blah, blah, blah. But basically, he is, these two gentlemen are leading this country. And those are the numbers on the right hand top. And the, the statement is pretty much valid. What uh, Pierre Polivari is saying is, is logical. It, it's data. So that's slide zero before we get started. Slide number one or reason number one on my deck. Um, he, uh, so Pierre Polivere was actually talking uh, on Red FM 
Vancouver, uh, somewhere in British Columbia, and I heard him saying, so that's the quote from his talk. And right from Canada, he says, there are 6,000 arrests for the same 40 people. So this is about um, just an example of how the law or the policing or law and order works in this country. So uh, the same set of people have been doing crime. They just go inside the prisons and they, or, or, or the law or police, whatever you call it, and they, they come out and they kind of redo the plan, redo everything they have done in terms of crime and social disturbance. So those are some of the numbers. There was a letter which was written by <clears throat> one of the lawmakers uh, to the government there, I guess. And then the data you see is basically uh, in terms of municipalities in British Columbia and what are the number of prolific or prolific or chronic offenders. And then number of negative police contact, which is like they could not meet. So I've explained uh, the, what it means to have a negative contact, which is like an individual being considered a suspect is chargeable. Uh, they have been charged or charges have been recommended. Negative contact is not reflective of all prime files uh, generated uh, for these individuals. For example, in Prince Trust, top 50 prolific, prolific offenders generated 736 prime files across PC. Of which 2882 were negative contacts. Just to give you a context of, now I know that India, we, we kind of make a fun about the police doesn't do its job and all of that. You know, it's the dress they have is like 1860s. Uh, the khaki uniform and everything, but this is what is happening in Canada. This is not my quote, uh, Red FM Canada, Pierre Paul, the leader of the opposition. If, let's say, the Conservative Party is elected, he is going to be the Prime Minister of this country. Number two is <clears throat> the violent crime, uh, which happens here, which is at 32%, again, the same quote, given a small chart of comparative analysis of, uh, this is from a website called Nation Master, and what happens in terms of stats, Canada versus India, for example, the crime levels are 22% more than Canada and India, just an example. So if, if you were to just compare logically what's happening between both the countries, but that's just a number that is at 32% right now, reason number two. I'll move on to reason number three. This is my personal favorite uh, on a sarcastic note. So. <clears throat> Please don't excuse me on that. So there are a lot of anti-India activities which, which happens here all the time. I've been experiencing this for since I'm here, 2018 roughly. Um, so you see some of the quotes from the media. India asks Canada to prevent anti-India activities by individuals. Group space there, number one. And the second one is, of course, India wants citizens in Canada about hate crimes, anti-India activities. They're smiling, so that's New Delhi miffed as Trudeau government falls to re in anti-India activities. So, uh, and I'll come to that more in terms of what we mean by anti-India activities. So there's no stoppage there. In fact, I recall, I think last year, there was an intelligence committee from Indian government, which has come to the Ottawa. They met the, the prime minister and his team, I guess. And then that was, that's out in the media as well. And then they tried to, I guess, that's my reading, that they were trying to convince the government that there is anti-India activities, why don't you stop it? Then there, there was no action, of course, and this has happened. Um, it is political, religious, and a lot of other things. So I'll have more to talk about that. There are some relational points uh, in this presentation today. <coughs> Moving on to reason number four, which is housing. So housing crisis is a big deal here. It's obviously unaffordable, very high price, a lot of immigrants coming in, they don't make new housing, it remains the same. So those are some of the media quotes, which is in the news, so uh, I just want your attention on there as well, so that you know the context. So real estate, Canada's housing pricing is just the beginning, Economics, economists say, so we are seeing a price correction in the market as I speak, uh, and the Bank of Canada has been raising the basis points of the sort of interest rates, in other words, which is try to which is basically cooling down the housing prices, which is good and bad both for, for depending upon what situation you are in, but just wanted to show you some screenshots of uh, what media thinks about that. So can, the second one is Canada's housing bubble has burst. Now brace yourself for the economic hit. So economic hit is like people who would have purchased at higher prices, they will be paying lower interest <clears throat> when their term. So in Canada, it's like five year term usually. So when that term is over, they will be asked to pay more for the same amount of uh, money they have borrowed. It's just that five years, if you pay, let's say, 
focus on interest when their interest rates go high and you can only fix up to five years so next five years is what you can fix after five years so that will be like it could be six seven eight nine ten percent whatever is that government's basis points or interest rate in that prevailing market so the person who are actually paying let's say two thousand dollar a month will be paying two thousand six hundred dollar or three thousand or plus dollars a month without knowing without any control on the consequences of taking a loan here so that's the reason and this is CNBC's Benjamin Tull. Quality here is not a crash by any stretch of imagination. So it's going to be more, I guess. So that's number four. It is uh, Canadian experience. So when you land here with a lot of hopes and a lot of experience, uh, I was fortunate to have worked in India uh, for, for eight, 10 years before coming here, eight, nine, 10 years, I guess. And then um, the first thing they ask you is, sorry, but you don't seem to have a Canadian experience, so do you have a Canadian experience? That's a big, big thing here. Um, in general, it's just a, there's pros and cons both, but I have, what I've noticed is that it's just that Canadian people are sweet people. They haven't traveled a lot across the globe. There is no reason that they have to travel. So what happens is that um, there's a lot of, uh, sort of protectionism <clears throat> among the people and the communities here. So they're, uh, you know, you can have an MBA from XYZ college in Chandigarh or India, let's say. But if you have an, a three-month diploma or a six-month certificate course from Toronto University or University of Toronto, University of Waterloo, that they can recall better. So it's a marketing problem. But, but usually this has been also used uh, by a lot of HR people to negotiate a little better salary with you. And But it's basically a... Phenomenal term. It's actually everywhere. So you can't get over it. So that's I'm, I'm sure if you are trying to land coming to Canada, you would have definitely heard about this. So that's number five <clears throat> Number six is of course Canada is exorbitantly expensive. There is no doubt about it It's I've just given two screenshots from I guess a website called bova.ca and numbio.ca um, that's basically cost of living in Canada and then in each province uh, what's the minimum cost of living I can tell you that the numbers are very optimistic there that's not that's num that number may not work in 2022 but you, you look at the numbers roughly between four to five thousand dollars a month is what you need I guess it is for a family of three or so to to live in Canada today but on the right hand side, if you see the NumBio quote, I've given family of four, estimated monthly costs are $4,348, some change there, Canadian dollars. So that's not really practical. I know that that money, you can't have a member, like a four member family here and living happily, it's like the bare minimum uh, of uh, survival. Um, it is very tough to live at that money. So. So it's very expensive in, in the sense that I cannot define you. Like I've lived in Bangalore, I've lived in Guwahati in India, I've lived in Northern India, Delhi. I used to feel that probably Guwahati or Bangalore was the most costliest, but I can tell you that this is uh, a next level. It's way beyond the So I say to my friends very quite often that if you let's say earn $100 in Canada, you will be spending $130 every month, let's say, no matter what happens. And uh, everything else is on top of that. So uh, this is like a consumerism-driven society. Um, what I prefer to call, so North America is more about consumer market. There is a product for everything and there is a community for everything. So you are, as a, as a end user or a consumer, there is more inclination or uh, this is more likely to happen that you will be spending more and more money uh, because you know, there are things like weather and all which don't permit you. Like, let's say, for instance, if you don't have a car, there is, the car is like a hand and feet on ground here. So six months when it is minus 30, there's nowhere to go. Without car, you can't even get a grocery. Um, we have tried, I've tried initial few days of my life here where I could, you know, go have a, just get the grocery bags and walk a mile to reach my house. But that doesn't work in practicality. You will always need a car here. So that's how expensive it is. And you can always search more on that. But it's just given uh, data from two different websites of approximately what it costs to be a family here. 
Reason number seven is the most profound one. Um, and I guess since there is a lot of uh, buy-in for this, which is like Canada has free healthcare, Canada has free education. Please be very careful. Healthcare is, I don't want to sound optimistic here. It is it's basically a joke or basically a crazy thing. Like it is nowhere close to what you feel in India. Imagine Indian government hospitals in, in this situation. The only difference would be probably they'll be talking nicer English to you. If you're lucky, you might find find somebody lucky on the reception, but it is a screwed up thing. Yeah. So I've given some data around that. What I meant when it's a joke. About 1,000 patients in Ontario hospitals hallway. Sorry, about 1,000 house patients in Ontario hospital hallways on any given day report. Is what media says. These are these are all recent this year or last year maybe that I'm sharing with. And there was a lot of action that happened during the COVID era. Uh, or, or which is still not over yet, by the way, in Canada. So the second one is, in fact, um, the government were actually laying off staff because they were not vaccinated. And you know the the freedom convoy and everything that happened that was basically stopped. So unvaccinated Windsor Hospital staff have been fired and now they have a shortage everywhere of staff. Um, I saw a recent article where I've seen that, I think, um, the province of Saskatchewan, I guess, Regina, is going into uh, some southern states in India where they have the nursing colleges and they will be setting up booths for placements. Maybe some some dollars are also promised to come to Canada. So that's happening here. And they are fast wrecking uh, jobs which are in demand. So the PR process and immigration process will be fast tracked. So that's basically because of the crisis that, I have, that they have in healthcare, which not many people know. So when I say free, it is for everybody. So it's crazy. So I'll share my personal experience before I read this to you. Third is Ontario hospital wait times continue to worsen as healthcare crisis grows. So the claims that Pfizer vaccine wasn't tested on preventing transmission need contacts. So somebody in the media was justifying it, which has actually happened. So um, there was all the things that happened with the vaccines rollout and the way it was pushed to the human society becomes questionable. And then Pfizer has said, that what they were, it wasn't tested on preventing transmission of any kind. And that's the article I just wanted to share you. So healthcare is that much screwed up here. Uh, on my personal experiences, I've dealt with multiple hospitals in GTA, Greater Toronto area, Northwestern Ontario, and different doctors. It's, it's just crazy how, I mean, coming in from India, I can tell you that this is way more jaded and ancient here. It's just that there can be long queues, long lines. There could be people sleeping on the floor in the hall rooms, like you saw the news. And in fact, um, the most funniest moment of my life was that um, there were no beds actually. So people who had to take, we call it saline in India. So if you were to just give saline water, uh, they will just have a seat or they will not even have a seat. They will just stand somewhere and the nurse will actually come. I uh, just insert that needle in there, in their veins and then they will just be standing with a sort of a stand on their side and they'll be walking because there's no place to sit, there's no place to go in. It's that crazy. I also witnessed uh, people literally sitting outside the hospitals, uh, much like a crazy um, sort of line that you see in India pretty much. So there's no really developed country per se. Their healthcare is screwed up. That don't if, if somebody tells you anything positive there, uh, and I have my heart goes out to all those people who have been working hard. They are just ill-treated to be honest, like working extra hours, all the nurses, the doctors, there are a lot of Indian guys there to be honest, a lot of Indian doctors I have uh, with due respect to them. I know they work hard, but the whole management and how they manage things is, is messed up. I can't define it in words, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so if somebody tells you anything positive about hospital and healthcare system here, uh, please read this three, four times, reconsider your decision and apply your own logic. And only once you're convinced, convinced, only then you believe them. So that's my small take there, two cents. Reason number eight is um, minimum wage. How many is not enough? So basically there's a, I think Ontario has $15 an hour minimum, which is, uh, which is not a living wage. So. Uh, for example, in the screenshot I've just shared that a living wage is not the same as the minimum age, which is legislated minimum all employers must pay as it is set by the provincial government. 
the living wage basically reflects that people what people need to earn to cover the actual cost of living in their community and draws on the community specific data to determine the expenses so if you let's say are employed for <clears throat> 15 dollar for full eight hours and 22 working days so just keeping aside uh, saturdays and sundays in other words or any provincial or government or federal holidays in that specific month uh, roughly 2400 to 2600 is all you make even if you are employed so let's say these are blue collar mundane jobs if you will um, or run on the mill jobs so basically uh, that will not be enough to survive like you can hardly pay a rent and do something else with that so that that uh, i know people live in so i have due respect for them people share rooms um, the basements i've seen that in brampton mississauga a lot of uh, cities in wherever there are a lot of students so i have respect certainly for them but minimum wage doesn't work it is not enough the kind of effort you put in versus what you get out of life is you can't even compare so um so that's why <clears throat> if somebody says you and because in indian minds we always convert you know whatever is current rate of exchange one dollar is 59 rupees so i'll be getting this if i save this i'll send that back home in india that doesn't work that way it's when you start spending and there's no way to survive without spending money i don't know how people do that but but that is not enough so so don't calculate i mean my i would recommend not to calculate in indian rupee terms because it doesn't work that way you are here you spend money here uh, there is no practical way to be here and spend money in rupees and still on the have the same standard of living so that's important number nine is i call it lifo actually it is an hr term um, which is like basically if you get a job in canada let's say if you have a job in canada and now i've seen this in my personal experience as well working here in the corporate that uh, it is basically a selection method of employees for redundancy based on length of their service and those who have the least experience that's a service being laid off first so last lifo is last in first out so I've seen this with my own eyes happening to plenty of people here. There are organizations which keep on hiring across the year. Let's say beginning of the year, they'll be hiring. October, November, December, they'll just be laying off people. And there are big public IT companies whom I, uh, I know for sure they, they keep on doing this all the time. And then there are, and this is very, it's not like it's a, there's a cultural difference again here. In Eastern context, we think that <clears throat> laying off somebody is not good because you know you are kind of hitting them on the on their bottom you know and then making them uh, making them unemployed or so but in the west it's not like that people have hard feelings but uh, but profitability is what companies are for and then this becomes the most convenient option for nature i've seen that whoever was the last hired person if you have to optimize they call it downsizing laying off like what is happening with twitter if you have seen <clears throat> as i speak there's nobody who is working in support and there's people have actually heard have uh, given up on that company less than seven percent staff have told that they really were ready to work hard as per Elon musk standards and all of that so there's more which you'll be seeing it in public very soon but in general this becomes a very con convenient option so let's say my point here being even if you let's say are here and you get a job you are actually very vulnerable in terms of being the last employee employed and then um, being a new Indian in the whole country you you don't know we think that when you watch YouTube videos we understand the country it is not that how much ever videos on YouTube you can watch it's not really the way it works uh, living in Canada is very different from living in Canada uh, sorry living in India is very different from living in Canada and when I say so I mean so it's not really that uh, again the internet and the youtube certainly works so but even if you have a job let's say in this case it's risky here you are very vulnerable it's not like back home in india where you are employed means okay i have a job you know i'll take care of it as long as i'm not doing something seriously wrong i will have this monthly income guaranteed my paycheck comes and i'm happy um, this could be a tricky situation so a little bit of warning on that in terms of uh, point number nine related to my point nine previously point ten is the layoffs are very common here because profitability is the ultimate thing what businesses in any part of the globe are working for so i just given some numbers there that for example uh, well simple has um, managing about 15 billion they laid out 159 employees 
This is very recent, by the way. So I think day before yesterday or so, Shopify, 1,000 employees, Clear, Co, Cut, 125 employees. Um, and you see what happening with Amazon, Microsoft, Twitter. Uh, Ford Motors laid off 3,000 globally. 120 were out of that from Canada. And uh, Bad, Bad Bath and Beyond have also done so. So that's the source I have given that. And this is how common it is. So number 11 is very important, which is freezing cold weather. My favorite topic. So <clears throat> right now, as I speak, the snowfall has started here in uh, southwestern Ontario. So Canada has one of the most severe winter climates of any country in the world. Canadians across the country may see uh, a severe cold weather condition that can affect their health. And now I'm a vegetarian. The first thing that happens with us is lack of vitamin D3, lack of vitamin B12. I've tested my blood, so I can tell you that. Um, but in general, it can go like yeah, crazy sometimes. Minus 30, Jan, Feb, Feb specifically is most crazy month here, at least in Ontario. And then basically you cannot be productive and no matter how smart decisions you make in life. So from let's say November, December to March or April, you are always in snow or freezing cold weather. So six months you are like in hibernation, there's nothing to do. And uh, uh, inside the room, it's cozy because it's heated and everything that is fine by God's grace. But 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 if you see the productivity in, in one calendar year, you six months, um, there's no way you can be productive outside your house. There are people who do like dog sledging and winter sports. Uh, uh, so with due respect, I'm, that's an exception. But uh, I don't know a lot of people from India who will be doing that and uh, still survive because we have the different body, the genes, the different look and feel. It's just a different um, evolution that you have as a human being. So that's important uh, point number 11. Then we'll move on to point number 12. Uh, point number 12 is about rental challenges. So in the sense that it's not really easy to get a house on rent here. Um, you need to give typically like credit history, first month, last month, and some reference letters at most. Uh, and if you're a new Canadian, that becomes even more challenging. But... Um, and if you go the the under the table that we call in Indian terms, like you know, living with some partner or friend or sharing a lot of accommodation, some other Indian owned family, uh, which you'll pay in cash and all that, that happens there. But that's that can also trick you a lot. I've seen students getting in trouble because of that. And um, and again, there is an increase that happens year on year. Government has a cap, but right now it's very challenging because of inflation in the market so the owners of the house will want to go bring up the prices and if somebody is living in they can't do that so um, just an example that why Canada is losing affordable rental housing faster than it's being built <clears throat> so what happens here is that large investors have been buying up Canada's rental stock at increasing profit and it happens here all the time so just an example reason number 13 is a lot of people who live in isolation here I have observed and um, I have sympathy for them, to be honest. Um, there are cases of mental health and that's like so common that uh, the corporate world uh, will make sure that you understand that the government of the provincial government will make sure that you understand that. And then federal government has programs. And if you see an example there on the right and bottom, 75% uh, of children with mental disorders do not have access to specialized treatment services. So that's the situation. Uh, on the top of the screen, right on top, is like uh, in Canada, 3 in 10 households, which is 29.3% in 2021, were solo occupants. And um, you will see a lot of, uh, and obviously I don't want to get into personal details, but a lot of uh, individuals who are single and living in with a pet. It could be dogs the most, the cats and anything else they like. But that's very common um, seeing here that you can see. And it's even more difficult with pets around. But but in general, um, there is a lot of aloofness here, if you will. High school system. And then, honestly, the less I talk, talk, the better it is. It is, again, the second freebie that you kind of hear that um, Canada has free health care. The second most important is free health care. Sorry, free education, which is, again, a crazy one. Now, education here is... Have leftist agendas 
uh, I'll let you research that. But in general, I've shared a news and I'll read that for you. You understand the kind of things that are going on. And, and again, the reason I'm sharing is that uh, the parents or Indian parents more specifically have no clue. I have had instances where I've tried talking to them, uh, explaining them what it means and what is going on in schools and what kind of things that they're teaching. But I guess they are so busy, <coughs> maybe struggling for the bread and butter, chasing jobs and um, maybe it's a big decision that there's no way they can do anything else than to send their kid to the same school. It's the situation here. So uh, the news is Oakwell teacher allows to continue wearing large prosthetic breasts, school board says. So just a quarter, this is very recent, November 11th, I guess, 2022, days back. Um, this is basically, um, uh, when I say education system, I'm comparing, um, let's say apple and oranges, which is not right, but India versus uh, Canada. India, you have a lot of private schools, the government schools and multiple other trust-based education formats. A lot of choices there, that being a very dynamic market and different cultures, um, diversity and all of that. Here, we don't have it. It's just that um, everything is basically, end of the day, is government controlled. So education is a, and healthcare as well is a matter of provincial government here. But the federal government dictates in, directly, indirectly. So uh, no matter what course you take, what kind of, uh, I've tried like French immersion, I've tried uh, just the Ontario curriculum, I've tried international baraculate or IB program, it's just all the same. It's just that they let you do in schools. Schools usually are underfunded, so they don't have enough of money to run. And they don't have a say in decision making, be it principal, director, whatsoever it is. It's just the government which dictates, they will send a notice, this is what we are we've got to do. They have separate logins, the students have separate logins. So there are uh, both cultural things, if you understand what I mean. I'm just trying to hint you as an Indian parent that they teach that to only, don't really go with the Indian family values that we have there. And then this is one of the examples that I wanted to show. There is less focus on STEM, science, technology, engineering, medicine, or uh, any kind of things that we study here, there, uh, back home in India. So in general, uh, the there is good practicality though of what kids should be, how they should be independent. When I say independent, again, it is not independent in Indian English way. This independence is like uh, teaching them can they survive on their own without parents, without anybody, without anybody even, you know, giving them a shoulder or a hug. So this independence is different because we have little colonial English there in India. Sorry to say that, but their dependency means parents and attached to them and the family values. Here, independent means something else. It's not really that. So you could be away from everything. Uh, you could have a different sexuality and you can still survive. That's the kind of value system that we have here and uh, that's they teach in schools. I have good friend, Canadian friends whose kids have <clears throat> sort of basically grown ups. They are in university or high school, so they don't know much about this, but this is happening right at the rock bottom of elementary school system, which is basically, we call it nursery in India, which is here as junior kindergarten, higher kindergarten, grade one, two, three, four, five, six, up to eighth grade is elementary school, for example. So they ensure that the, all their political agendas are basically taught to kids right at the bottom so that they don't question anything left. I call it indoctrination, to be honest, but that's again my personal opinion. But, but again, since education is free and you don't have a lot of private schools, you have very less private schools. I have a next slide on that, I guess. But you are left with no choice then to either go to the school or just leave it. It's free, of course, which is obviously free, so we have to respect that. But, but it's, I have heard from the teachers themselves in my meetings that I don't want to name them that this is like immersing, you know, putting your feet in the water, that kind of education. But here, serious private school is the one which is which is more focusing. And if you have more serious version, there's something else, I guess, they said. So they themselves have told me they don't have powers. Um, I have respect for them. And there are a lot of union strikes that goes on all the time. So I, th I, th I think I have uh, next slide. Like I said, slide 15 is, of course, the private school. So even if you have, let's say, one, two, or three at max private school a city. Most of them will be in GTA and let's say, I guess, uh, in British Columbia, Vancouver, um, or whatever they have, the prime cities there. <clears throat> Most of the business happens in Vancouver in the west and Toronto in the east. And uh, even if you want to, let's say, no, I don't want to send my kids. Uh, in India, we do that typically. To any government school, let me 
let me try to uh, get a private school so that's so unaffordable that you can't uh, it's for millionaires like uh, you won't find any <clears throat> a common man or common man's kids going there it's very good there are some of the schools which are really good there are obviously religious based schools as well uh, you find some affiliation with specific sort of religion but in terms of uh, let's say hinduism uh, talking about the majority in india so far um, they they don't have a lot of, uh, they don't have Hindu schools at all. In fact, there are one or two in Brampton, I guess, and then you have to go there. It's mostly online programs that you can anyway study in India if you like online from here. But but they are very costly. Like it could be easily from $1,000 plus, $1,500 a month to $2,000. And they mostly you have to pay a quarter or six months in advance, or you have to pay a year in advance in most of the cases that I've seen. And then they look at uniform the elementary schools, the government schools don't have any uniforms anymore. It used to be once upon a time. Um, if you are a Catholic, you have a little convenient way out. You can, for the Christians, it's like they have a Christian school board in every city. So they do have, uh, I think, ninth onwards, the high school is what we call it here. They have uniforms, much more, little more disciplined, little more, uh, you know, natural society. Everybody belongs to one religion and they kind of, that's like little, Lot of there's not a lot of divide there, and there's one board which is believing in one religion, it teaches them. So, I, I have seen that is a little better as compared to this, but education is pretty much the same there. It's just that there they help uh, learn more values. I have some friends, um, I had a neighbor actually who was who had a wife who used to teach in um, Catholic school board, elementary school. Uh, she told me that there's a lot of cultural aspects and values that they learn there, which is which is completely out of the in general public education system uh, but so they learn a lot there as compared to what we have in in uh, public school board uh, just without any uniform uh, no religious values they are neutral all of that so but private is like very costly uh, if you are dreaming about it uh, i haven't been able to to be honest but it's very costly i know people who do it if you have a sustained source of income i've seen some doctors uh, Indian doctors who are doing so in Canada, Ontario. So that is, if you are, if you, can, if you can afford, it is always, always better. No doubt about it. So that's point number fifteen. <clears throat> point number sixteen is uh, uh, my personal, uh, close to my heart, to be honest. Like, and I'm quoting uh, Winston Churchill here. Um, this, this is more like a British colony. So what happened here is that this was like indigenous people land. Uh, they believe they came from Asia a long, long time ago. Nobody had uh, has a specific date on that. But they lived here and then uh, the Britishers came, the French, is, um, I mean the French colonizers, settlers came and they lived here, settled down. The French still lives in, I think out of 16,000 people that they came, they still live in Quebec here. This is one of the provinces uh, in Ontario, uh, in Canada. This is one of the Quebec and then um, and then every rest of the Canada is mostly like we call it English Canada. There's a, there's a French Canada, which is Quebec, and this is English Canada, like most of the other part, except Quebec, everything else. So, um, so there is a lot of signs of coloniality, which is like, um, so I'll tell you, these are small observations, but little critical observations. So, um, Winston Churchill quoted actually, if independence is granted to India, power will go to the hands of rascals. Or I don't want to, in fact, read that. So I'll let you read that, but. <clears throat> but what happened there predominantly was that um, um, let me move my screen so what happened there was that um, and then this guy happened you know uh, Rishi Sunak so I don't know what he meant by that but uh, but Rishi Sunak has replaced his position as you see Prime Minister for the UK uh, so he's obviously worshipped here in the West actually because of his contributions, which is, I, I need to have respect for that. But in general, uh, there are a lot of signs of colonization. So what happened here, like Lucknow, Delhi, and so these are name of the, um, you know, the, for example, the village was named after Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, that we have in India, UP, where the Indian Rebellion of 1815-6-7 took place. So since there was an Indian Rebellion, they call it Rebellion there, we call it something else there, like uh, Independence, education, whatever, be better. What 1857, uh, an East India Company. So, Lucknow takes the name of Sepoy, which refers to the Indian foot soldiers who fought on the British side of the on in the relief of Lucknow. 
So the person who got the award was actually because of that, whoever ceased close that operation in the flow, he was awarded here in Canada. Now, a historical thing may not be relevant today, but in general, these are signs of coloniality, which is like, if you're an Indian, you have to feel it and live by it. <coughs> so, yeah, his name was William, uh, A. Blasey Men, William Hollop Horton, Amashkosia, like I was talking. And he was the first black person and the third Canadian to receive the Victoria Cross. It's a prestigious Victoria Cross. We still have one, uh, I guess, Victoria Palace in East Calcutta in India, still today, until today. So this, there are places like there are historic sites like Benares Historic uh, House. It's in Mrs. Mrs. Agas of America, if I'm not wrong. And it's a little personal to me, but again, if you see the oath of citizenship, it is in the name of Queen. She is no more now, but it might be. It might have changed in the name of um, the King now. But basically, you you prove that you are loyalty to them, uh, and that's the kind of example of the oath that I have given there. It's not easy to read that. And it's a little personal to me, but because um, your Indian parents or ancestors would have actually fought the independence war against the British while back home in India, and now you have to take a, let's say a swear in or an oath in the name of the same person which is not really right with the Indian value. So this is a lot of sort of confusing but just a little context of it's not easy to become a citizen in Canada if you are from India <clears throat> because that's uh, we are different than Canadians. So Canadian indigenous people still live in you know different areas, protected geographies. Uh, they are suffering from different diseases, the genetic problems, and a lot of other challenges of electricity, water. Some people don't even have drinking water today as I speak. But India is not like that. We, in the indigenous society, fought back. They challenged the British, and then they got independence, as you know. Uh, partly some people, 1947, was 15. So this is like difficult to digest, and it still continues to be the same. Like I just, certain point is of course the oath that I just read uh, and there are things like there are websites on the Monarchist League of Canada, and the, the UK and the, all the Commonwealth realms that they call it now, uh, but, but in some part I've read in Discovered Canada I guess that um, we are not a country that has a, we don't, you know, have a written book that is a constitution, so they kind of praise the fact that they are a monarchy <coughs> and they have given, have given a screenshot where they justify why it is good to be a monarchy. We call it uh, constitutional monarchy and parliamentary democracy. That's the term being used here, if I'm not wrong. And that's again tricky because India has a written constitution. The United States of America has a written constitution. So how do you justify that kind of thing? So that's number 17. Number 18, Canada is also a welfare state, uh, which is good and bad both. Uh, good is of course it helps the needy. I've seen um, people who actually have become very big name in society. I guess uh, Chamat Al Patiya or something. He's a Sri Lankan Buddhist immigrant and his parents came. Sorry, his parents came in here. Uh, I don't know, 80s, 90s maybe. I still have some friends here who are from Sri Lanka, Tamil Hindus who basically left the place because of agitation and um, the unrest that was going on there. They have good life. So I have respect for this. Canada is a welfare state. They do have a lot of policies. I've just given a screenshot on from the Government of Canada website of uh, for all Canadians. All those bullets are so many income assistant, assistance schemes. Uh, for families and children, you have so many income assistance schemes and there are for newcomers, they are separate. So they do fund that. Uh, the problem here is the tax burden goes to the society who is paying taxes, uh, which they don't have a say. And I have a uh, one more slide to explain you that. So, uh, this is mostly a welfare state. And <clears throat> 19th is, uh, there is a lot of foreign policing and meddling that happens here, especially from China. In fact, recently it was found that um, there are Chinese police stations right in the heart of Toronto and uh, other cities in Canada. And I guess they have that policing in 24, some number, XYZ number, countries, number of countries that they do. Um, so there's a lot of interference that way and uh, for example the first screenshot if you see there is RCMP's Royal Canadian Mount Police 
uh, investigating Chinese police stations in Canada and then RTFK is investigating Chinese police stations in Canada, here's what to know. This happened in October 24, 2022, very recent last month. It was very important to highlight that uh, um, you won't find India having such situation, but this, this is how deep China is into Canada. Just an example of that. And the term was just inflation, but it's like, um, there's a lot of inflation here, and which is like um, the most important source of Canada's inflation. The government borrowed more than 700 billion. So uh, Canada is, I guess, second heaviest on natural resources, and after Russia, I guess, in terms of uh, the natural resources or assets that we have here. Um, but still, we have borrowed 700 billion dollars, which basically is, uh, brings in more inflation to the public here. Uh, the Bank of Canada continues increasing the interest rates. The inflation will keep going up. So that's option A. And option B is to stop printing money, which is like kind of uh, forcing people to stop spending, which is what they're doing in other words. So that will bring in recession. So uh, the government is basically choosing, people don't understand this, but in general, either you choose inflation, which will anyway end up in recession later, or you kind of don't print money anymore and let people spend what they have, which is anyway going to kick in recession or deflation, super hyper inflation, or uh, uh, depression, which is happening in Japan as I speak, something like that. So basically, uh, this is just being increasing and Bank of Canada faces stubborn inflation worries despite great hikes. So they're going to do it more and more. <clears throat> Chinese has a art of war book. So somebody called that kind of a name, a writer, author of that. So recently, uh, just an FIA, so there's a uniform that because of whatever inclusion diversity they believe in, they, they have a central neutral dress code now. And recently we heard that, I think a couple of days ago, that they are going to allow permanent residents who have lived in Canada for 10, 10 years or more to be a part of military or uh, the defense forces here. So that's an example of how they are gender neutral uh, in terms of the uniforms. They teach critical race theory and all that in kids in school as well. Um, <clears throat> I urge you to know who Rajiv Malhotra is. He explains nicely what it means, how it impacts uh, Hindus in India and Indian subcontinent in general. And I've just given some screenshots uh, some of US protests and uh, some, some Indian parents protesting the same in the United States, somewhere in Texas. And you see the screenshot there. Um, and then again, uh, in Rajiv Malhotra's website, is a, web, a screenshot of how caste can cause all racism and then caste ends up pop culture and mainstream disclosures. Um, so Indian tech meritocracy, meritocracy mask Brahmin privilege and then Silicon Valley Indians bring casteism to America. So they kind of, there's a, there's a lot of challenging going on in the West specifically around that. Uh, so Indian Brahmins could easily be labeled. So I urge you to learn more from Rajiv Malhotra sir on that. This is not good for the kids, but they teach all that in schools, to be honest. Curry smell is, <clears throat> I've seen some of the Indian friends taking it literally, and so I have a friend who actually keeps everything in a closed, she says, uh, the family actually says that um, Somebody told them you smell like curry, which is actually, uh, it's used in UK as well. It's used in the West as well. It is basically sort of a derogatory mark. It's sort of different form of subtle racism, but uh, but that happens here a lot. And somebody was actually fired. So this was like a job in Brussels. I just given a BuzzFeed website reference there. So don't take it literally. Some people try to uh, take their clothes, put it in a closed almira or wardrobe and cook outside, away from it. Um, we Indians eat a lot of spices, which is fine, but if somebody makes that comment, be careful that that's not really the way it is. It's really racist there. 24th is IRCC. There is a lot of backlog, so <clears throat> if you want to come to Canada, this is the department you deal with. Nutrition Refugees and Citizenship Canada, and then they have a lot of backlogs. They are, they are doing the same they have been doing for the past two, three years, 2.6 million backlogs. So don't have high hopes. I've seen people from India frustrated, shouting or yelling on Twitter. That doesn't help, but have patience. Uh, you have all my prayers. 
and regards, but that's how uh, the number of backlogs that they have. 25 days passport is, is getting a passport is very crazy here. I was back in India this year for a holiday and then I had to renew my kids passport. I got that in literally one day, not even in Tatkal scheme. Tatkal is obviously one day, but this was like literally normal scheme. One day I got it, which is printed in New Delhi somewhere and paid back to you. In Canada, it's like four to five months minimum waiting time. You see the lines there. Um, the example I've given is like, it's breaking us here. Dad has PC, dad has family short, two passports after five months wait. The, all the lines that you see in that image is for passport. In India, Canada hold consular dialogues regarding delays in issuance of visas, work permits. So there are also dialogues happening between both the governments. This is November 15th, dated 1-5. So this is how crazy it is. Like if you are in emergency and you are waiting for a passport to come, you can't do anything here. There is work around. People try to trick the system by booking the flights and showing it's urgent. But I can tell you that this is way beyond craziness. I mean, digital adoption point 26 is, is very, very slow. <clears throat> like India has much advanced banks, much advanced fintech and the IT industry. It's very slow here. Uh, people the average is beyond 51 or so. So it, it has an impact on every age of the country as well. But in general, don't expect like India. For example, in Bangalore, I know that there is an app for everything. I can get food, grocery, bills, bike, car rental, anything on planet Earth, I have an app for that. Things that I've learned. So in India, we call it mail, you know, mail me. Here it's like email. Unless you say email, they won't understand it is email. Uh, here mail means the, the standard envelope, post email. That's the difference with like a little bit of English that I've learned here. The banking is ancient that I said. Um, like I said, it's very ancient. Uh, there is a lot of red tape here in the business and in general across Canada, which is also acknowledged by politicians in public, by the way. It's not my words. Uh, there is a saying that you start a business in uh, US, they lay you like red carpet in front of you. But if you start a business in Canada, they will put a red tape in front of you. Again, on a lighter note, but uh, there is a red tape awareness week. Somebody calls CFIB does that if you are interested, but this is how much it is. Um, in winter, like point 29, you don't have a lot of things to do. Like I said, you have, uh, these are some of the things that I've listed you can do, but in general, in six months, you are just packed in a house. And being an Indian with those genes, it's difficult. We have, we're not like people who live here. It's a little difficult. So uh, in, uh, there's a, in Ontario specifically, there's a highway called 401, which goes from the, the borders to, for example, the Western borders to the Toronto, uh, or the global uh, GTE hub, uh, greater Toronto area hub. But otherwise, if you go north and south of that road, it's pretty much farmland everywhere. And this is mostly the case with Canada. I met a, so there are 189, 8, 000, uh, you know, 189, 874 farms roughly. And then I've met a family, a Punjabi family, and like pretty old guy uh, from British Columbia who has actually come to Ontario and asked me, you know, why you are here and uh, you must have had farmland and something to do there. But he just said, you know, it's there's snow everywhere, so six months is the maximum we can actually produce anything in the field. And beyond that, we don't have a job or anything to do. So that's why I prefer coming into Ontario, uh, which is not really different in my opinion. But again, uh, it's mostly farmlands everywhere. So if you love that, there is a lot to do for you. But otherwise, um, and these are like small towns. So you have a lot, big, large farm areas and then small towns. And then again, the farms uh, continue. So that's how the whole Ontario and everything else in Canada is actually set up. <clears throat> 31 is Toronto or Vancouver has all the jobs and it's all it's that way. Like no other cities, major cities have any other jobs. So the whole economics is concentrated in those two geographies. If you were to move beyond those, you have lesser options. Comparatively, there are exceptions always there, but this is just a comparative view. Um, like I said in my first deck, they're calling in 500,000 plus, like next year, right next year, knowing all this crisis in healthcare, all this crisis in education, shortage of labor, uh, everything else that I spoke about so far. And then there's an anxiety, you see the news on the right and top, anxiety spikes over housing amid Canada's plan to welcome 1.5 million new citizens by 2027. Permanent residents can now be a part of the military. I spoke about both the points. But in this situation, <clears throat> with the right frame of mind, and if you apply logic, you'll have to understand if that makes sense. There are specific religious fundings across Canada. There are, um, 
you know, political views like in any other country, but there are conflicts which happen for specific religions, uh, which is not really out that much in media, but that happens a lot. And I can tell you that Hindus are not one of them. There's the Bill C-11, which is basically in discussions, it's called Privacy Law of Canada. It's in regulation in House of Commons. It's under discussion like you see on the, you see on the screen, but there's going to moderate all the content, all the kind of things that you do online, including YouTube and social media. So there is a fear and there's a concern that the public has also raised, by the way, that why the government want to moderate content that is being produced in Canada. So, <clears throat> so far it is good. We can talk about it, but uh, I don't know if this happens, then what can you really talk about? There is an appreciation in general in this area. If you talk less, if you avoid talking too many things, uh, you are better off. So if you talk openly, uh, like we do in India, with your heart and mind out, or really freedom of speech, it gets a little tricky here. So that's Bill 7, C11 coming in. The search results, this is uh, my background in marketing as well. You can see my on my channel my, about my books that I have published in marketing uh, as a career, for example. But in general, the search engines behave anti-India way. They, um, so let's say just an example of recent uh, news. So all they work in tandem, all the left media works in tandem. So when I say left, it is Al Jazeera, which is going in. People know it's a Qatar government's propaganda, but we still get a lot of ranks in Canadian search engines. Likewise, Independent from UK, BBC from London, uh, Washington Post, uh, News, uh, New York Times, etc. from the US. It's just, they're all kind of the same point. It's just that, for example, uh, recently there was a news on um, November the 15th that world population reaches 8 billion. People with India expected to surpass China as most populous, populous nation. And exact same news will go to um, population growth slows in India as world reaches 8 billion. It's a different, um, different uh, platform, UN estimates. And again, the same language in another news, which is like world population. So it's not India who is becoming 8 billion, rather, but, but the basically it will go to create a pressure on India that, okay, you are doing a court or whatever, you're going to be most populous country on planet Earth. So this is what they do, basically, but usually the Indian rankings are favoring the left, and they are not, I guess, uh, and I think Sundar Pichai spoke about it in media somewhere on Twitter, I guess, a year or so ago, that he, he preferred to keep the internet free, and there is an attempt which I can foresee that uh, we can easily suspect that there is, a, there is an attempt to moderate everything online by the politics, politicians, the governments across the globe. So there are less Hindu temples, one or two per city, specifically in GTA, point number 36, and then they have their own challenges, you know, there are break-ins, there is a theft, there is a anti-India thing, some, some diagrams made there. Uh, this is actually the, uh, I think, third most, third biggest religion, if I'm not wrong, in Canada, like 2.3% um, of, um, yeah, it's third largest religious group in Canada, like I said, so, but it really doesn't get any attention of being the third largest religious group in Canada in terms of funding, in terms of recognition, in terms of even nomenclature, it's mostly anti-India or anti-Hindu, in other words, so basically, you don't have a say, that's what I mean. It's uh, common across the West. There is an understanding, I guess, from the top that this is the way it is supposed to be there. And there was an attack on Swami Narayan Temple, attack on $10,000 or some value stolen there. And it happens here quite often, but the media doesn't cover it at all. I've just managed to get the screenshots for you, but usually they'll play it down. Uh, now, they don't understand uh, this in Canada. Uh, people, it's not their mistake, it's just the education system, I guess. There is. Um, and I have some experience, I can tell you that. So, uh, people don't understand the difference between swastika and hacker groups from Germany. There is an obviously uh, the Nazi Germany and the, the World War II background, which I have a respect for. We have to give them respect. It's just that they cannot differentiate, and Justin Trudeau himself, the Prime Minister of India, uh, sorry, Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau himself, I have seen he's talking that language in House of Commons. So, he says, you know, Radio is conservative, I'm so standing with people who have swastikas. So, it's Indians who have the most swastikas in planet Earth presently. So, for example, uh, and he's the guy who is actually known for brown face and black face candle if you see his image at the bottom. So, uh, uh, I was living on a rent and then on Diwali I 
or to feel Ganesha, right? We put swastika stickers on the door and I put it and the next day I was like, I got an agitation call from the uh, owner of the building that you cannot do that, no stickers on the door. And I was like, why she is so offended? But then I came to know from one of the friends that this sticker and this symbol is sort of bad and not really seen as anything good here. So I, I understood that that was not her uh, unawareness that uh, <clears throat> when you live in India, you're not aware of these things. When you come out to North America only, then you realize in Canada, US for instance. But the prime message in that word again and again, without calling hack and cross, it is actually hooked cross, which the Hitler Nazi Germany had. Hooked cross is what it means, it is hack and cross. He is calling swastika, which is Ganesha swastika, Hindu swastika, which is not the same. So, um, please be careful of this aspect, and it can mean a lot of things. There is a lot of violence in schools, the gun, to, to finding of gun in the school, to what not, and everything happens there especially high school. So just give us some example of the impact that it has in society. So Ontario government website left and top, uh, strengthens protection against bullying and violence in schools. Bullying is very common in areas where you don't have a lot of immigrants and a lot of Indian community, if you will. Uh, like Kitchener, I've seen, for example, some instances of bullying to Indians. And it happens everywhere, by the way. It's just a matter, a matter of time that you notice it. Uh, they are not taking it seriously, under reporting of student violence persists, persists. so there is a kid telling the calling word collegiate in the background you see on the second image there um, because they want to keep nice and clean image that how much it happens for example um, in 2007 survey which is like long back now there are a lot of immigrants here as compared to 2007 13 to 15 year olds were over 70 percent reported have been Bullying online, bullied online, and 44% reported having bullied someone at least once. So that's how prominent it is. Um, and it is government funded, so there is no control there. Like you, private school, you can take your kid out, but here, like you take him out, that's the only way. Like go to other school, pretty much the same. Toronto area is where a lot of immigrants are, a lot of Indians are. <coughs> Most of the seats are for, in fact, they rule the decision making in House of Commons, in other words, when the politics happens here, and then there's a lot of violence in that particular area. Like if you live in an apartment, there might be some shooting, some, some snatching, it's, it's all the time, everywhere. And we just have this perception that things work better here, like un unlike Indian police, it's not the same. I have a friend who is a shop owner, and he have these break-ins, like somebody throwing something on the glass wall and then moving in, stealing from the store. It happens here all the time. And, and after that, nothing happens actually. Ask him, you know, like back home in India, like police will not do anything here. Do they like do anything? They find the thief, catch the hold of them. He said nothing happens. It's pretty much the same. They just have a <coughs> little better law and order, much better uniform and all that. Gun maybe, but but the violence is pretty much there as well in GTA, the stores, anything else like. And when there is more inflation, more homelessness, more people, it happens more. He says so. Just quoting somebody else. Insurance is the highest, there is no escape, and there's a letter that we can get from India, you know, showing your driving history in India and all that, they will recognize. I've tried that personally, it doesn't work, it just gives you some TV in terms of um, the duration you have to wait between G2 and G, uh, sorry, the, G, uh, the first level, learner's license versus G2. There is no escape, uh, that doesn't help you in insurance at all, your insurance will always keep going higher. I've tried changing cities here in Ontario, nothing works. It just goes higher and they have no reasons. They will ask you a lot of silly questions. You know, you have anybody else in house who writes, your wife is there. So it's crazy, like, but the kind of questions they ask, but it, the all, the, the focus is on the excuses to either increase the price or in case you happen to anyway claim to, to avoid that claim itself. So there is obviously, uh, and most of the industry is regulated, like, you basically go to one guy, get a price, and you go to second guy. It's not like India that you are doing a vendor shopping, you get better price somewhere else. Most of the times it will be either same or more. And I guess my assumption is that the data is actually shared behind the scenes about every license plate or every bill number, every legal driving license number, whatever you want to call it. It's that pay the most uh, because they are new, they don't have a driving history, there's no background, so they'll be like $300, $400 a month. And of course, the students who are 18 years old, just being eligible to drive legally in Canada, those, I have my sympathy to you guys, but those are the guys who pay the most, apart from the immigrants in general. The, there is, the drugs are legal here, okay, that a lot of people like it, 
go all into that business. But so just an example, for the alcohol, tobacco, cannabis in Canada, prescription grade narcotics over the OTC medications, psychiatric medications, medications prescribed for conditions such as attention deficits, ADHD, dietary supplements, and vitamins, all drugs are legalized and regulated in Canada. So, um, so you see in the right and bottom, Canada trials pre-criminalizing cocaine, MDMA, and other drugs. So even cocaine, they want to decriminalize whatever. So in general, uh, and you can see often people waving hands at you, uh, like advertising cannabis, like marijuana, and smoking that. In Canada, it is believed it is medicinal. In India, it is a crime, but if you happen to take a lot of that cross the border into the US by driving, they will catch you. It's again a crime in uh, United States. I'm in India, but in Canada it is legal. I guess it is a business interest, but this is how drug friendly the country is. <clears throat> now, no matter what you do, you will always have this brown color and um, <clears throat> nothing negative about it. It's just that you may think that if you talk differently, you say that I have friends who will who have just landed, but when somebody asks, Where are you from? They'll say, oh, I'm from Ottawa, I'm from wherever, England. But they would have just landed from Chandigarh in India. So if you say so, people will actually know that. You are like just another brown color. For a lot of sweet Canadians, it is difficult to differentiate between that some continent. So they can't really, please understand that, they can't really differentiate between a brown person from, and a brown in a positive way, by the way, Pakistan versus India versus Bangladesh for them, everything is same. They had an Indian brown, Indian person, their faculty is good for IT. And they assumed that, okay, so if the Indian guy is good for IT, let me hire a Bangladeshi also, who is also showing IT experience. Uh, it is different in my context, but in general, no matter what you do, this color is going to be always with you. And this is your first marketable impression, your face value. So whenever you go, wherever you go, this is always going to be felt. Um, if you try to do <coughs> things, uh, creative things or anything different, this you will have to know this reality, you have to face it. And, and the, 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 the racism is subtle here, it's not really, somebody will not throw a stone at you. And like, uh, I think Australia is more on the heavier side of things, like the UK, but this is more subtle, you can't make out. But, but please know that you have your identity on the face value. Before people get confused, say it out louder, and I used to do that in my interviews, that I am Indian, then we talk the rest, kind of thing. It helped me a lot, I'm, I'm grateful to the God, but in general, it's not easy to... No matter how much you modulate, change your accent, be proud of your accent by the way. Whatever you do, nothing is going to change. Your face is going to be the brown. They know that even if you say Ottawa, people here understand that this is not Ottawa. This is not, they have 40th, 50th generation running here. They're all from the Europe culture. But you are not one of them, it is different. So and it, is, uh, it is new to Canada. All this that you see around you and immigration is happening from 2015. And whenever this government came in power, they are running the second term. But it is new to them as well. They are also getting accustomed to these changes. They, are, they don't even have, nobody has asked them, nobody, you know, asked their opinion or even say yes or no to them. They were just forced with this decision by the government. They obviously, lucrative offers like the real estate will go up and everything. Now they are facing the consequences, but people here are really good. They are warm people in Canada, especially real Canadians, and they, they can differentiate. Again, related to my previous point, people haven't traveled a lot. They All they have is if they have a lot of money, they go south somewhere in Cuba, some Caribbean countries in summer, winters, get cozy, go to Aruba, some countries here and there, Netherlands. London at max, but they will not have a lot of urge to travel from here to work all the way to different uh, geography in East, altogether called India. So people know less about you, educate them, inspire them, tell them, you should know, I mean obviously, um, a lot of my friends, they don't understand India itself, so they would have seen like one state, that is where they lived, born and brought up, never seen India, all they have seen in the United States of America, that there might be taxes or somewhere in the Vegas, so uh, if you know your country, my request will obviously to talk about it because people know it less here and, and they want to do, they want to travel, but they don't have information. It's good to talk. The thing is like, unlike India where kids can actually fail by mathematical number and marks in society because it's more crowded, more populous and more competitive, which is actually as an advantage I see that personally. 
Uh, here no, nobody fails and private uh, is very expensive <coughs> and there is um, the thing is so the situation is so worsened in Canada right now that there is no enough of uh, medications on the on the over the counter here in pharmacies and there is a crisis going on so uh, it's like an ad they call it Advil or Tylenol here which is like the paracetamol or crocin of India that is not here so government is working you see the sweep by the prime minister here some time ago <coughs> that you know they, they working with many and people here don't have manufacturing facilities so everything is actually bought over much like usa usa have some manufacturing and both are very different countries by the way so in general there is a shortage of drugs for the kids as well which government is seizing for so please know that before you arrive get some medication for your kids as much as long lasted stock you can because anyway if you go in emergency or healthcare uh, all they do is you know take this like a paracetamol of it take Advil or Tylenol go and sleep you have to wait a week for x-rays six months for an ENT specialist if you have God forbid if you have a disease which is not curable then then they can choose they have really in COVID it happened that they were choosing on the beds who will be in the ICU and who will be outside of ICU it's crazy I can't talk more on that but in general for the kids be safe in case you are getting get as much as medication as possible divorces are pretty common here if i'm not wrong it's 40 percent is what i see this is from a law of mlg merchant uh, law group i've just given the screenshot and their website link in the number there i think 40 percent of marriages and in divorce in canada so please know that fii and i've seen the tendency among my friends as well so in my Indian community that I know of uh, there are cases where they were actually good as a couple uh, as a parent and, and with the family they came in here and then they have this whole you know North American thing on their head and then a lot of them were separated actually. unfortunately but this is the divorce rate and FIA here it is important to quote here is a leader of the opposition most likely if the government remains the same we have the same prime minister or maybe a different, but he is the leader of opposition. That is his chart. I tried to do an astrological analysis on his chart, but I've seen him also trying to please, much like in Congress, what happened in India, like please small communities here and there, trying to build mind share. And then sometimes I've seen him going against two, actually two entire cultures and trying to please one culture one day, the next culture the next day. If the, so the festival one day, next festival one day. So he does not. I don't think uh, from the appearance of looks of it, he, I'll analyze more on his chart and birth chart, which I have a small screenshot there. I don't have his exact date of birth, I have taken some approximate numbers there. I tried to create another video for you guys, but but for example, he created a video that he met the Malayali community, and then all he talked, everywhere he posted was Malayali community. So I guess he doesn't understand that Malayalis are all in India, the Indian Malayalis from Malayalam, Kerala in India, and uh, which he never quoted. So. Uh, there is a lack of awareness as well, but in general, uh, even if he changes, the government changes, I don't see a lot of things changing in Canada, and I'll read more on his horoscope later. There is no respect for seniors here, they were the most suffering, and uh, there are places like um, uh, old age care homes here, which are like, nobody cares for these guys, they have just paid taxes. So if you were to retire in Canada, please look into these news and images. What happens if you really retire? Because the whole culture was teaching you independence, being alone, being alone, whatever. At the end, they are they were the most impacted by that. They are the most vulnerable, obviously, with the kids included, to be honest. And then uh, there was an RSV kind of variation of the virus, uh, along with the flu that has been going on as I speak in Canada right now. They were hitting them at alarming net, and then if they go to hospitals, you know their fate. And, um, they, they, they need a lot of attention here. I feel, I feel so sorry for them. I feel a lot of pity for them. Too. They need a lot of respect in the society. Um, and I've met some of them who will be like outside hospitals. They can't even make a phone call for the ambulance to come for you. It's really troublesome sometimes. So uh, Canada has to respect that. There's a lot of identity crisis in general. Like when they flow into one ocean, like. You become, become the ocean, ocean. like no nobody can, after a while, nobody can see that's like, uh, that was Indian river flowing into ocean, you know what I mean? So, there's a lot of identity crisis when you grow up, when you see the next generation, the third generation, 
and they will actually be Canadianized. We will call them sort of Canadian. Even if the parents are from India, they will say, you know, my parents are from India, but I am from Canada. All that happens. There's a lot of identity crisis that happens here. It is for every community that lives here. And um, it's like, you know, when the root is, with the tree, you can make out the tree and the root is one. But when the roots are somewhere in India and the tree is here, you can't say that the root belongs to which tree. So that's the kind of context or analogy I wanted to give. And uh, <coughs> there is an interesting thing that in point 49, I've met some other people from other British colonies or other different colonized countries, by the way. So there I've met some very interesting people from Goena who are Indians who look the same. They were taken back. I've spoken to a lady, she's she was 76 years of age when I met her in a Hindu temple in Brampton or somewhere. And then and that country has, I think, maybe 34 or 27% Goena or 27%. I don't know, Trinidad has, Trinidad Tobago has 27% Indians, Goena has 34% Indians. So these are like people who were given some job promise by the British 150 years back. They were put in a ship and they basically sailed up to these countries and they were doing the sugar cane cutting and all that mill and factory business. And when they were supposed to go back, the government of the British there offered them uh, jobs and land to settle down here. So they settled down there. So all these communities, the best part of North America and even the United States is that when you go all over the place, uh, across the world, all the Indians, you can actually meet them here because they will have passport from South Africa, Guyana, Trinidad, Tobago, but these are all Indian people, they look like us. I spoke to them, very interesting instance, but their language is different, they use some English, Hindi, some tribal language mixed there, and I spoke to them about language, they said, it's Hindi, I said, no, I'm from India, I've traveled across, so this is like your lost roots, and um, <coughs> some people have really sad stories where they kind of save money every five years, they kind of take money, especially Guyanese people, they go to India, try to find their roots, some, some of them have, some, some of them couldn't, and uh, and then they are lost kind of thing. But, but I'm glad they have a big community there. They do. Uh, by the way, they are very religious. They do all the Hindu rituals far better than what we do in India. Like in Navratri, they'll be in the temple premises with the tents on, like full nine days of um, Ma, Sh Ma Prasna to Goddess Durga or Kali, and then they just live in the temple premises because they will be vegetarian those nine days. It's phenomenal how they do it, very good people. So, <coughs> just an interesting in, in incentive. Like you can actually meet somebody 150 back, back uh, years back in history. The childhood, what you had in India, like growing with your community, your religious identity, your like Indian flag, or whatever you want to call it, will not be the same when you grow kids here. Uh, there is very crazy, different childhood, like lost in transition, when they come home, you belong to XYZ, let's say, even Arab community for that matter. When you go out of class, you are taught Canadian values in the classroom. So it's difficult. I've seen kids having this continuous battle. And at some point, a lot of kids give up. They try saying, I'm Canadian or American, whatever. And it changes over a period of time. So this is, again, the childhood will not be like you had, privileged, um, well, well balanced and full of identity, kind of. Childhood. The, the taxes are very high in Canada here. I can't talk about it. It can go up to 46%, 52%, depending on your salary. So there are different salary staffs, and then accordingly it goes up like any other country. But in India, I guess 30% is the top line. So even an Ambani will be paying 30% on personal income taxes. Here you can go up to 52. There's a saying in Canada that <coughs> in Canada you work for you work for the government for the six month free of cost. Basically means that. You kind of pay all your 50% taxes anyway to the government. So you're working for them, you like it or not. So government has a totalitarian control on your thing. Like your kids go to government education, you go to healthcare is government, your education is government, politics is anyway government. All the facilities are government run. There's nothing, no escape. Uh, so, and then <clears throat> uh, the, the taxes, there's no escape. Who comes in? You basically pay for everybody else coming in Canada as well in other ways. So, you, you cannot have a say in who is coming in, but you are supposed to pay. So all these uh, welfare schemes um, and the refugees coming in, people coming in who are not economic immigration is actually a burden on Canada's economy. And then we pay all through that taxes, uh, all through our own taxes, of course. <coughs> like I said, uh, there's one line in BLS Canada where 
in the people will be there from three o'clock in the morning to get their uh, Indian visa and things fine like this is like representative of the foreign ministry of the Indian government in Canada they help them but this is the only way you can do anything in India like if you have to renew Indian passport in Canada this is the place to go uh, but you like I said the taxes you pay are for everybody else coming in Canada but you don't have a say on who is coming in that's how it goes um, the leader of NDP Jagmeet Singh is actually um, uh, he is banned in India and continues to lead the uh, opposition in Canada and then he is actually uh, supporting the liberal government and he is like the right hand of the liberal government right now and all the policies all this uh, craziness that you see in Canada is actually he is also a part of that along with Justin Trudeau government. So liberal and NDP have this sort of alliance where they are working together on the uh, next two three years I guess unless the elections are done he used to not even acknowledge, but when the Canadian investigation was done, he acknowledged that uh, Sikh extremists masterminded Air India bombing. This is actually worse in the history of Canada. A few of the coast of Scotland lost their life in 1985, like I said. So he continues to be the leader of opposition despite of anything. He's banned in India till date. I call it like Hindu phobia. Uh, like Hindu families assaulted, Hindu temples being attacked, and the Al Jazeera, I'm telling you right. Like, he will actually play the other way around that Hindutva is not Hinduism. He'll keep on playing that. Uh, it's a full on propaganda arm of the Qatar government, and then <clears throat> uh, they will try to poke it down. So, uh, hate crimes against Hindus are on rise in Canada. All that is a part and parcel of story, so please be careful. <clears throat> this is my personal observation again, uh, going back to our British colonial history. The, when I visited Toronto Museum, it's a nice big museum, and again, <clears throat> India is regarded in one corner as South Asian civilizations. We are a civilization state, 10,000 year old and all that, you know. But but here we are shown as a small nation within South Asia. And then we have our stolen idols, by the way. So I've given some <coughs> screenshots of interesting pictures that I took. Like uh, on the right hand side, I guess it's Shiva Linga with four faces. Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, 9th century. So I think they never imagined that probably there will be a museum and the world will become digital, there will be YouTube and people can see through. This belongs to Indian civilization, or Indus Saraswati Valley civilization. Now we have these stolen idols everywhere. In fact, uh, one more you see the Surya, Surya, Standing Buddha, Vishnu. So these are like God, even date to date in Hinduism, which is like a stolen murti kept there without any rituals, without any worship, is like broken pieces was shocking to me and in fact there's a lot of bias for China that I see China have a complete section like on the right hand side of the Toronto Museum like in Canada for example like I guess there's a national museum or something then there's like full section to their civilization like this glorify China like anything I'm sure Chinese government have taken care of the Canadian buy-in and it's pretty much evident in US as well but Indians could not do it unfortunately I guess but they show you and, and they call you that way as well, you know, you're like South Asia, if you see Rishi Sunak when he was hired, they call him uh, first British Indian, sorry, British Asian or British South Asian Prime Minister in the UK or whatever. But they never term, use the term Indian actually, which when Asian guys are calling it Indian, not Asian. But anyway, that's how they regard us. So this is like a difficult thing to digest when you go there you see your own culture your own gods kept locked in a museum and you can't do a jack about it and then um, yeah, this is like ancient historical archaeological precious things you know 9th century 10th century something which we must study and understand what is there in that when it was done who was that and whatever is our great history but this is the situation I spoke about there's a huge China section sorry I don't have images now um, at times in situations uh, you could be actually talking to the somebody which is actually a anti-India country I don't know to name them specifically but you can meet people from there I've met some doctors from there so it's a difficult thing to digest <clears throat> even they have the same feeling uh, a lot of them try to create this uh, niceness which is very common that you know you get to go back home and feel that they're very nice but I can say you that reality will be seen in a cricket match or anything else that happens but uh, I've met some doctors which I did not have a good experience with for my kids but 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 I leave it at that it's like these are some awkward moments you don't know how to face and I'm sure this must be happening in other communities as well like any two you know countries coming in together on one 
and meeting an enemy country which have been actually fighting to you so far so it's like just an FII um, there is a sort of corporate funding which happens uh, for a specific group of people to or specific causes to promote their interest and it happens silently under the tables somewhere and uh, it's not really out much in public but um, the government funds the corporate institutions and controls a lot of them and give them some rebate or tax breaks to promote certain um, bias there. So it could be like religion based or hire people from that geography in this country, something around that. Uh, I don't have specifics so I will leave it in that but it happens if you observe carefully. Uh, if you are in Canada you will see that the hiring will have certain patterns if you can see it carefully and uh, it will keep on going from there. So. This is challenging to be because it's not based on merit by the way there's no meritocracy or anything to do with merit but it's like favoring something in specific they might have their reason and there is no real freedom of speech as such um, they have their charter of rights which promises or all of that but in general i've observed that the less you talk the better it is because india you can actually <clears throat> talk against the pm in public and be okay with that because we believe in tolerant tolerance whatever you call it we are tolerant people and all that but here it's not that um you see the freedom convoy what happened here they were all exercising freedom of speech and then these cases were done and then uh, the everybody knows what happens i've given some relevant screenshots of what it means like that here <clears throat> the relationships with india are a sore one like this guy was when he went there and i think modi pm modi could not come for some time he came on third day or so they never met him actually he had his programs extended he was dressed up like sherwani and <clears throat> very ethnic indian clothing but indians were actually in blazers and all he met bollywood they were in like blazers but he was like full on over <laughs> overdoing the, the ethnic diwali dress and all that but <clears throat> he met actually some convicted sick extremist photograph besides sophie his wife in India so he was actually meeting some of them who were actually convicted also and jailed me would have come back and met them so his wife was taking photo with one of them and they were invited in one of his meetings actually so he, this is the kind of things he was doing in India and then he came back it was a disaster it became a big issue here and then he ensured that relationship is sore from there there is there is a lot of problems when you <clears throat> want to deal with the government of India from here it's it's all delayed and, you know like you can get a visa, e-visa for six days from a South Caribbean country, Cuba, Jamaica and all <clears throat> online, but you can't get from Canada to India. There are reasons for it. So this is just an example of what is happening. Running a new business here is very difficult. There's no business friendliness. You can easily get loans, but that's very difficult to pay out. They do have programs, but it's extremely difficult because the market is very small uh, and there's no population here. There's most of farm and everything. Like I said, so it is very difficult. I leave it at that. <clears throat> this is a funny observation I have. Like uh, the news and media channels have so much money here that they actually flow fly over the highways and have this chopper traffic. And the radio has a dip update. So I was wondering, you know, <clears throat> we talk all these intelligent things in India back home, but uh, what is this chopper traffic like? Why can't <clears throat> like why can't they use that money somewhere else? Like what is the point of having a traffic and highway view from chopper like? I know, but it costs money, like the the, the the gas and everything. But anyway, they do it here. That's an FYI. Um, <clears throat> against Indian students specifically, there are specific bias and scams. Like uh, the government knows here that there are um, things that happens in Punjab and <clears throat> Gujarat and other geographies in India. But basically, they'll have this craze of coming to Canada and they will come to a college which will actually not physically exist. So there are a lot of scams in terms of education which happens with students specifically. They are very vulnerable. So for example, right hand top is like woman faces removed from Canada after college admission later turned out to be fake. So this has happened here, they paid the fees, nothing happened. In COVID it happened, they paid the fees, the, the classes are going, they are sleep like getting up in the evening. Uh, it goes crazy here. <clears throat> like uh, a college in Brampton, they had the sword fighting and all that. Um, and then, Thousands of Indian uh, students scammed after closure of three Canadian colleges. So three were three colleges declared bankruptcy, and then students have nowhere to go. They have paid fees and everything. And you see the last news of Toronto Star: Canada's exploitation of Punjabi international students is history repeating itself. But this is well known here. 
and I guess there were <clears throat> at any point around we have 60,000 plus students in Ontario alone. In the whole of Canada, we have about 232 to 260,000 Indian students living in Canada studying, which closely brings about six to eight billion dollars of revenue a year. But they have no say here in any decision making whatsoever, not even recognize that they are from India. So that's the kind of contribution we take out from India in terms of money and push it here in Canada's economy. They, they earn from it bread and butter and then and still you get scammed. So that's the impact of what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> now there was a viral tweet uh, uh, Stephen Muir and she has done and then it became a media thing which they are kind of the search engines are not showing it anymore but somehow I got a screenshot for you. So I see, see training and manuals have bias against Indians. You see the right hand side um, the quote unquote kids in India are not backpackers as they are in Canada and then this is the deck this is a training manual for IRCC staff how they train them to be specific on Indians when they approve their applications and everything this is all the everything to do with your visa PR citizenship immigration and then this is the <clears throat> minister of that department you know he says racism plays a role in immigration decisions um, <clears throat> I mean, sorry, he, House Immigration Committee here, so they had to answer, then they played it down, and it is out of media now. But you see the deck screenshot there, I, I don't want to read it, but I'll let you read that. <clears throat> that, you know, where is it? high risk, we are a high risk purpose of travel and all that. It's crazy how biased it is. And it's country-wise, so I've seen like, for example, if you're from Indonesia, you apply for visa or a PR one month, one day, whatever, something like that, you get it from India, 36 months, 24 months like I was looking for <clears throat> I'll come to that it's there in my further slide again on the land these are all developed economies which is like all of the best world western world which is like this is lending economy they lend money and the, the banks earn money and that's how the whole economic activity starts from there so it's easy to take loans and essentially even more difficult to pay back <clears throat> The jobs are anyway moving to India. If you don't know this, please be aware that if you make a call here to Amazon, CIBC, BMO, any bank, any industry, if you make a call, more or less it goes to India somewhere. Uh, my friends in Canada knows this, but, but jobs are moving away and this country have stopped manufacturing goods and services long back. Uh, immigration is a big part of the GDP. 16% of that comes GDP comes from roughly, uh, I guess, the real estate itself, which is also like a housing is in crisis, like I said. So it will be crazy going forward. But in general, the jobs are moving to that country or developing countries where it is cheaper to find a labor, cost effective and all the reasons that you know of. All the great stories of Sundar Pichai, the, <clears throat> the Satya Nadellas and everything that you see in the West is actually the first generation. I know that our so-called Indian education has, does not have a lot of respect outside, but in general, what I've seen contrasting is that all these successful case studies or successful individuals that we see of great IT and technology CEOs are actually the first generation Indians who were primary education or elementary education was in India and they went for higher studies for graduation or maybe undergraduate program overseas, MS or PhDs or whatever they did, but that is when they become successful. But their grassroots cultural values, ethos, identity was all very Indian. And I have, to be honest, I have not seen that with their own second generation. When I look at their kids and the second generation of Indian Americans, Indian Canadians, Indian Australians, I don't see such great success stories. So if you think India's education system is not that great, please, please double check. Uh, it might be just poor marketing. Uh, it might just be biased things so that you come here and study. And I've seen the education system very closely, even colleges and undergraduate level. Spoken to people who have done courses here versus India. Um, <clears throat> there is a lot of green grass there. So again, in general, CEOs are all first generation. Uh, second generation, it will be difficult to find such success rates. In general, India versus Canada's growth rate, we see we are growing at 8.9% annual 2021. Canada is at 4.6. So at some point, it will peak up and India will be <clears throat> okay. Like a good good place to live in like in terms of economic growth you will always have this third world respect no matter where you go like i said they cannot uh, people here are sweet they can't differentiate between an indian and bangladeshi pakistani unless you tell them specifically you brand your marketing open your mouth instead of saying i'm from ottawa canada i'm from whatever netherlands you say specifically you are indian 
then I've seen that you get more respect and more acknowledgement. Schools often have these strikes, the disruptions from this uh, union strike, that union strike. It's a common phenomenon. So this is on top of everything I spoke about the education system. So I leave it at that. <clears throat> if you go to delivery rooms here, the, the problem here in the healthcare that let's say if you decide to, um, you know, bomb, bear a child here or have the delivery done here, you could have people who hate their job sitting in the delivery rooms and the, again, healthcare challenges. So it's scary how <clears throat> and very courageous of how uh, anybody can give birth to a kid here. It's not easy. It's, it's very difficult. The, the, that part of the society is okay. I've seen that our experience has been good. But in general, uh, some instances we have seen that you can have the people who hate their jobs like in a delivery room and imagine the trauma of a mother and a baby going through that journey and somebody is like cursing the job, you know. So I didn't use that word, but like somebody is talking negatively in the beginning of it. So it can get tricky. India loves more English uh, than the <coughs> US, Canada put together. And we speak, the, in terms of population, we speak a lot of it. So if you like English, uh, India is where it is rubbed the most. So I've given some statistics around that. So Canada is near to US, but it's not US. A lot of people think that we can come here and go there. It's not practical. And then, because they look at date of birth of country. So if you, if you take Canadian <laughs> citizenship, your date of birth is laid up place is still India. So then you go to the same Indian pool in terms of waiting for getting into the United States. So it's not easy, first of all. And then in terms of economics, there is no way you can compare uh, US and Canada. It's just nearby country, but it is not safe. It is you, like different by all possible stats and combinations. So whoever tells you that is not true. <clears throat> it's not practical like to come here and go there. Uh, holidays are mostly around <coughs> Canadian festivals. Uh, my observation was specific, specifically around fireworks. Like on Diwali, we get this feeling that you know it's not legally allowed to burn firecrackers outside, firework outside. There's a, there are places like Brampton where there's an exception. I think Chatham Kent got an approval this year, so I'm hoping they continue this tradition. And then in Ontario must be other cities but in general mostly it's like these are the days victoria day canada day or the new year is where it's allowed legally otherwise it's not so uh, we feel that uh, maybe a diwali holiday or diwali sorry the uh, licenses to allow fireworks in public should have been allowed but that is the one thing i wanted to mention there holy is always chill it's in march so it's very cool you will not have anybody on the street uh, nobody will go people need appointment here even indians want to become canadians so they will want appointment before you go there uh, the different generations so depending upon when they have come they, they will have their own small uh, niche friends and circle and community so it depends upon that but holy is usually chilled out in in, in winters <clears throat> You need appointment for everything and anything on planet Earth. 28 is, of course, you don't have a family support system here, unlike back home, so because you'll be alone, so it, it can get hard on you, harsh on you sometimes. Um, if you were to really apply for parents and grandparents visa, so let's say you were here, you got a PR, now you want, you are alone or you are not married, whatever may be your personal situation, you want to call in your parents or grandparents who might be alone at home, so that's like 36 to 37 months from India. It also varies by country. <clears throat> like I said, there's a different, they have their own mathematics to do that. And then 37 months is like three years plus, you have to just wait for that to happen. So by three years in a recession, the world will change. Now we are seeing a situation with Russia, Ukraine. You cannot guess what will happen in three years. So it's too much of a planning. <clears throat> this is again a funny observation, like <clears throat> you see a tent over there outside. The, there's an aerial view of a tent installed in a Toronto Western Hospital. Like I was talking about the healthcare crisis. There are tents outside. This is the situation that has reached. Two Toronto hospitals installed tents outside to relieve emergency room waiting overflow. This is like emergency is like just a line, by the way. So I've seen, I have personally experienced this, by the way. So I used to think that, you know, when you call in these ambulances, they will just go there right in the emergency and make sure you are okay. It's not like that. Um, paramedic or popularly we call it ambulance in India where we call them you know they will come here um, but all they do is essentially uh, if you are not in an emergency situation and in emergency by Canadian standard it is like you are bleeding you have a heart problem or you are going to die they should definitely be able to make this out at a site that you are going to die 
that is emergency in Indian terms. And then they will take you to really ICU and full on like let's do whatever has to be done to save that person. And they will save you, which is a good practice. But anything else is not a priority. Like everything else is actually not a priority. So what they do over here is that um, if you are like not able to do anything, like you are in some emergency, which is not life threatening, you just call them. The ambulance will come with full on show, full on lights and everything. They'll come at your place and they'll take you there. And there might be a long line outside waiting period with a tent, without a tent in a hospital. They will just go you go there and drop you in a line. And they will say, just follow the queue, like follow the line. And that, that has happened with me personally. So uh, people may have different experience, but this is like what we again perceive is not the reality. Um, English Canada in bracket and English India is very different. We often think that think over there that we know, we have seen YouTube, we understand English, we can talk, walk, whatever. It's not really the same thing. Like um, I had a few embarrassing moments, like I said earlier in one of the examples, like we call it mail, they call it email, uh, we call it post, speed post, they call it mail here. And then um, I had this embarrassment where we had, uh, I was in a lift, we call it lift in India, it's called an elevator here in Canada. There's no lift thing here, lift is to physically lift somebody. So, <clears throat> so when you are in a building in that thing, lift, you say I have an elevator, that's what they will understand. You say I have a lift, they don't understand. So I had this funny moment, just an example. Now what happens here is typically when you are here, you take a lot of time to understand two, three, four years just go by, then you are used to these benefits and all that. I've seen people struggling with that. Then they, they can't, they somehow got a job, they struggled, they got education three, four years anyway, gone $60,000 gone into toss whatever. So then they realize that I need to get it back. I, by the time somebody's kid, if you were like <clears throat> infant or uh, when you landed here, the kid was three years old, he would have become six, seven by now. So uh, a lot of people in it from India I've met actually, the seniors especially, the second, uh, first generation who came in 70s, 60s and I'm grateful to them. And because of them we are having a temple here and all that cultural gatherings. So <clears throat> they can't go back really because the kids themselves love Canada now and they are settled here. So they, have, they just go for some uh, auspicious vacations, some visit there, but they don't have any other way and means to go back to India forever. So they will be stuck here forever. I know a lot of them want to go back, but you know, one guy I met, he's a, he's a grocery store owner. He says in Hindi to me, you know, that uh, my kid has gone only once in 23 years and I'm glad and I can't go back because all my kids are here, they are in university now. So this is again a big thing which not many people from my country or India knows. 83 sports, basically, there can be instances where <clears throat> there's a case where a brown man from Punjab, I guess, uh, got a Canadian citizen, the second generation uh, into Canadian. He was actually doing wrestling match with another uh, person from India with an Indian flag and he, the Canadian guy defeated him. So I was thinking, you know, who will be praised now? The parents, if they are happier, they are happier for the kid really winning the match or wrestling and putting in this Canada's flag or really the Indian guy where he really comes from, the family comes from uh, losing the match. So this happened actually. So as can, uh, the right bottom uh, screenshot, a Canada celebrates Amar Veer's 105 kg gold. Father gives credit to Indian genes. And the Canada's Amar Desi makes former Indian national champion father proud with Commonwealth Games wrestling medal. So it's a good news for Canada, but you know, the nationality and identity crisis, that's what I meant by that. <clears throat> All the country, uh, Canada is divided into small communities and groups. There is Italian, there is Indian, Arabs, uh, Pakistanis, Italians, Armenians, a lot of small communities, they're going to be small groups, they will have their own ecosystem, which is good. So it is actually, they call it multicultural, which was adapted in 1982 in Canada as a law or whatever. It's a good thing to have, but, but again, <clears throat> that is why there won't be a lot of to and fro interaction between different communities. So they're into small groups. Now, if you're an Indian national or Indian passport and on a PR on Canada and something else like a visa or work permit, uh, I've seen situations where uh, the external government, third party government, like a China is funding a scholarship in Canadian University, which is one of the examples and screenshots I've given. So this is called, um, I think March of each year they do it. It's called Chinese Scholarship Council, CAC. They determine the eligibility. I met an, that, uh, through my friend, one common friend, which she was actually doing a PhD funded by the Chinese government. I was like shocked at that, but again, how do you prove your nationality on, even if you have a sense of <clears throat> being loyal to one country, right? So, um, 
So this is uh, when you click on their website, this is their csc.edu.c and it creates the Chinese version of that. So there can be instances where your education can, uh, higher education can be funded by foreign entities. Just be careful on that, like what it means, like when China have a police station in Canada and multiple other countries, like uh, what direction it is headed, nobody knows that. Quebec is a tricky, uh, like Quebec is of course a French settled, uh, French Canada, like I said. And, but in the past, there has been referendums or uh, motions to keep it separate from, um, like 1995 Quebec referendum was to keep it aside away from Canada. But Canada was formed as a merger of these three entities. I think Quebec, uh, Ontario, and then one more province. And if let's say Quebec goes out, uh, the whole settlement agreement of how the uh, can, how Canada was formed will become void actually. So then the whole Canada can be into pieces. It's a little tricky subject more to do research on that. But there has been attempts in past to do that, move it away from Canada. Uh, the, so this doesn't get shown a lot of time in media because <clears throat> of the, all the green, the grass is green on the other side phenomena. And but essentially, there are poor people, there are homeless people, there are people who beg here on the street. And I've given some images. Uh, it has increased in last few years. There are about, let's say 2021, more than 235,000 homeless people in Canada. So it is there everywhere. Uh, I know it goes by number, but comparatively, if you see there are, it's in India, it's in Canada as well. Um, a new poll suggests that about 30% of new young immigrants to Canada could leave the country in the next two years. This is um, media news, not my news, uh, young immigrants, so uh, because of high cost of living and multiple reasons, this is happening. I've seen people moving from here to Canadians, moving from here to New Zealand and multiple other countries. <clears throat> if you are experienced in India, whenever you come here, uh, if you are like starting off fresh, it's okay to struggle, try, but if you are like somebody like me who came with eight years of experience, then you basically always take a dip in career or you can end up doing mundane blue collar jobs and all of that. So it's very common here. Uh, if you are very lucky and very blessed, a lot of other positive combinations in astrology only then you can actually uh, get a good career and you have to <clears throat> more or less do something here, some certification, something Canadianized. This was here in India by the way, 1991 we had a license Raj. So you still have an active license Raj here in Canada which they are trying to red tape and uh, move away from that thing. You mostly, nine, more chances are that you will be in this situation. <clears throat> If you believe India has casteism and all like favoring certain communities, uh, now again, here as well it happens with due respect to uh, all the programs in the government and the recognition and the community that need, needs. But like, for example, if you read this sentence, right? So components of the program for a black entrepreneurship loan fund, uh, black business owners are just highlighted there in orange color. So <clears throat> I can't go and get this thing done, to be honest. And, and I don't have a brown or Indian entrepreneurship program here. So there are things that are happening here, which is trying to basically create a societal divide. Um, obviously, I'm guessing it will be done with right intentions, from, but from Indian perspective, we should know that uh, what happens there, like community-wise appeasement, minority appeasement, or anything that you call, which is messed up all the internal uh, matters of that country where everybody's meddling into. This is happening in Canada as well, and it has its own consequences as we move forward. <coughs> Average working age, <clears throat> 29 years in uh, India. I think it is 51 or so, uh, plus minus some years in Canada. So your tendency to meet when you walk around you, when your tendency to move, uh, meet a young guy or a girl is more. Uh, the youth culture is totally different when you walk in India. You'll find younger people. When you walk in Canada, it's higher age group. You will find uh, very old people, old people, mid-age people. It's very rare that you will find somebody youngster like you. Uh, somebody of a working age. So average working has great uh, impact on everything that you do in Canada. <clears throat> this is again a fun fact. Uh, so the retirement age, uh, so CPP is Canada Pension Plan, RSP is Registered Retirement Savings Plan that you would have heard of. Um, and there's also again a selling point that you have free healthcare, third point, free healthcare, free education, and you also get a pension here, which a lot of people are not raised. You get a pension through CPP that you pay off, cut from your salary, give it off to government in advance. And they do that right, we call it TDS like way, like right when your salary is paid out before that. But in India, <clears throat> um, the average age is, I guess, 
69.89 years as per 2022 data. But in Canada, the retirement age is 65 years of age. And I tell this to my friends from India that <clears throat> you will actually die working here one fine day because uh, there are ways to take little early at retirement up to 60 years or you can postpone up to 70 years, I guess. That's written there, 60 or as late as 70. But an Indian body with that, everything that we grow up there and come here <clears throat> is not Canadian, okay? It's not North American. So if your average lifespan itself is less than 70 years, like even if you retire at 70, 65, <clears throat> what are you left with? So if you are coming here with the hope of retirement and cushion and benefits, please look at the numbers. This is not me telling. This is Google telling, so I'm assuming it is right or bias, whatever. But life expectancy has a great relationship with age of retirement. So if you are to retire early here, you cannot retire actually, unless you are doing something else, a business or something else maybe. Personal to me, a uh, military kid. So if you have a, if you are in Canada, if you have a background in military or your parents were, any of the parents were ever in military or defense services in India, uh, they're going to ask you this form, which is called uh, IMM554612-2021 English version. So they are going to ask you this. I've literally given the screenshot because I was literally like shocked at this like level of detailing so they are asking you let's say your parent you are in canada you want to become a pr or a citizen now this form is applicable to you so you need to give start date end date and then you need to give uh conscript or volunteer uh, career services your rank like your rank or your father's uh, parents rank their title their duties their name rank or commanding officer of that particular battalion or unit or, or whatever in air force or uh, whatever form of defense services your parents were into name of your unit your unit location number of people you supervised everything possible on earth in detail and i'm sure they are very stringent in the uh, all the documentation the ircc people more or less it will be returned to you and you will have to write again and again so i'm telling you this is very specific information confidential information about a government job or defense services of a particular country and I don't know under what treaty and how they are bringing into <clears throat> Canada and they want to know specific details about their military background or military service so this was sort of I was taken aback on this like level of detail so if if you are a military kid or you or your parents belong have any experience in, in Indian defense services please be assured that these are too many details being shared with another government uh, whom you are likely going to be a PR or Canadian citizen if you will. <clears throat> this I actually tell told you like when you start a business in the US they put a red carpet in front of you when you start a business in Canada they put a red tape in front of you so this is just a, a local thing which goes on but this is the reality as well whenever somebody compares US versus Canada please be rest assured that they just don't know enough there is no way to compare okay this is like one small california in one one of the 50 or many states of uh, 50 official states of us there are no official states as well by the way 50 official states of usa this is one small california size of economy so please don't get into that battle that debate the most funny part here is that which which we don't know as an indian that india the government cannot fund doesn't fund officially at least it's not but here it is the CBC news and, and the good amount of media is actually funded by the government itself. So it's like you are, the boss is funding you, you can't go against the boss. So everything you see in news and media is mostly a government written script. They have given written script because they fund them. You see the numbers, this is from CBC website. Um, let me read for you. So this year operating funding uh, was 1098 uh, million. Capital funding was 109 million and working capital was 4 million. This is literally government funding CBC News. And um, and the Bank of Canada is actually saying, you know, how we are separate from political process. So basically banks are, the bank, the Bank of Canada, the government, um, the media, everything is run by the government. Like it's like by the government, for the government, this is a form of democracy. So basically, uh, you know, he's a previous decision maker in, in part, uh, Maxime Bernier, he said, he said, is it time to defund the B CBC? There was a campaign to do that, but but he, they say exactly what government will want you to know, and they are the mostly read, mostly heard, more, more or less platform. There are other things, media houses as well, which is shocking to me. It is in public, by the way. So 
when you look at news and media here, please be rest assured that it is the government that wanted them to put it that way. So you'll have to use your own intelligence and brain to really know uh, what else could be done. Auto insurance is highest here in Ontario. Uh, it is again paid by the highest pay price is paid by the immigrant, like I said, like newcomers uh, or, or young adults to pay the most. And there is no way to escape that. So this again, I'm sort of repeating myself, but sort of it, auto insurance is crazy here. The point is foreign entities. So uh, Canadian government allows Chinese acquisition of Canadian lithium miners. There is a lot of buying for EV. Lithium mine is very important. Lithium is essential metal or a mineral, which is a natural resource. Like I said, Canada is very rich, second richest <coughs> natural resource country, for instance. So, but China has a lot of infiltration, has dozens of Canadian miners tied to critical minerals. China state run companies tapped into Canada's wage subsidy despite diplomatic dispute. In fact, you saw um, today the uh, G20 nations meeting day before yesterday, or, uh, yesterday the Chinese Jinping, uh, the president is actually scolding Canadian PM Justin Trudeau and he was obviously, he saw the camera and then he said in Canada, we don't, we, there's something freedom, we don't do stuff, something like that he said. Basically walked out of the room, he understood that there is a camera next to him. But this is the level of uh, <coughs> foreign meddling that, that is here. Um, there is a crisis that's coming in, the global economic crisis, I call it, and um, I will do a different astrological view and video on that. I have covered some part of that in my previous videos in the world view for next three years and, and Canada's future in terms of astrology for at least now up till September 2023. So I have spoken briefly about that already. It is it is going to be a crazy situation going forward, especially in April and June time frame next year. You can see more in that, that video for sure. And I'll try to do a separate financial crisis video. <clears throat> but that is going to be impacting Canada as well. So it will be like if you're planning next year to come in, mid next year, later next year, you have to rethink because the situation can be different in Canada than what you see today. In Canada, so it's again English thing, but <clears throat> sorry doesn't mean sorry, but people could be like offended at you and yell at you, sorry, like, <laughs> but it's not really sorry. And like Canadians are very diplomatic and very nice people, so they always say thank you, but when they say thank you, it doesn't really mean thank you all the time. <clears throat> but you'll have to see the body language, understand that culture to really understand what is really happening. When they say sorry, it cannot really mean sorry all the time. When they say thank you, it could be like, um, just for the sake of it, like, thank you, kind of thing, right? Um, when they call you sir, you have to be very careful that uh, that's very, when they're addressing you very professionally and legally. So, like, a police, for instance, will always call you sir. Like, you can be like, you know, like, India have respect for address. That concept doesn't work here. You can be like, like a 15-year-old kid, but they will say, can you please come out, sir? When they say sir, whoever tells you sir, please be very careful that it's very professional, adequate language they're using. And they are kind of warning you. So, sir, thank you, sorry, means different in India. It means different in Canada. And it's not the same. <clears throat> the fate of indigenous people. So, Indian people have been uh, not treated nicely here. And there's been like horrible history. The quote there, mass grave of indigenous children reported in Canada. So, this was done last year and last year. And then our Prime Minister decided to have a day for truth and reconciliation. It was a big term used. And when the first truth and reconciliation meeting was happening, he actually was on the beach partying with his wife. There's a screenshot there. So Trudeau's Pence first truth and reconciliation day in Tofino on vacation, contradicting itinerary. Even this year, he was in June, uh, when this happened, 2022, he's somewhere in Cambodia or some meeting there. <coughs> Not to show that uh, where he was, but he's outside Canada. So, uh, but those guys are suffering without water, with a lot of challenges there. They have been ill-treated and I can't talk about the mass graves. You, you can't see the news. You can't even look at this as like residential schools, like there'll be a church and there'll be a school. And then if you dig them, they have stopped digging it anymore to such an extent that they, are, they have realized that if they start digging, it will be only graves underneath. So it's like kids, graves, know this dark history. If you talk about crime in India, crime against Indian people, historical atrocities against Indians, or we are called Indians because they have indigenous background. Please be rest assured that this happened long time in Canada. It has happened till 90s, early 2000s in fact. And there are survivors who come out in public. If you listen to them, my heart goes out. Like you can't, you can't understand like what kind of atrocities they have gone through without any recognition. Like 
And this is the kind of seriousness the government and the prime minister have on that. <coughs> they always refer to you as uh, uh, South Asian, like I said, and then Rashi Sunak happened, and I think Churchill quote you saw this, or the Indians can also not be, I'm not sure who's quoted, but somebody said, I think Churchill most likely that Indians cannot be very successful in Northern Hemisphere, but this happened, so he's replaced him. So they refer to you as South Asian, and if you look at the website, there are religious studies uh, across the Canada, Canada um, country, as a country, and then you have religious based studies, uh, cross religion studies, really, um, but but Hindu studies are actually the least. If you look at the scale and volume of the third biggest religion in Canada, and then the subcontinent, and even the globe, uh, like I said, it is not it is undersold. It is not acknowledged as a fact, and then. We have very few colleges where you will really find any, any sort of Hindu studies. You will find other religions the most growing, funded, everything, but Hindu studies will be the least. Uh, there is some emphasis in Quebec. There are some good professors there, but otherwise it's, it's none, not, mostly not there. The, the faculty or the teacher, whoever was there, would have left even if he was there. Because they run <clears throat> like anti-India sentiment, like I said. So they will usually try to catch somebody who can talk with the brown, talk anti-India things, and then make him the tool glorify. Which has stopped happening, which is a good thing, but that is the fate of Hindu studies in Canada. This is a bonus fact. On a later note, I want to end this video that uh, Russell Peters is is Indian representation to Canada. He came in and lived with his parents in Brampton somewhere, and he does very good Indian accent. So a lot of cross-cultural things, if you have to understand how the locals perceive here as Indians in 80s, uh, 90s, 80s, and uh, whenever he was growing up. You see these videos, you learn a lot. So I've learned a lot from him. And he's very funny when he does Indian accent in front of Indians, that in America, and he can really guess who is South African Indian, like Goyana Indian, Indian Indian. So, so that's, I want to end this video on a positive and a lighter note. I've spoken my heart out, whatever makes sense for you, out of this 102 topics. <clears throat> I hope this video helps you and, and um, helps you make a better decision in life. Uh, I wish you all the best. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Namaste.